Hi, welcome to FAIR TV. I'm Peter Hart. Before the Senate Intelligence Committee released the executive summary of its investigation of CIA torture, some media outlets were portraying the United States as the potential victim. That was what we got from ABC World News. On December 7th, the broadcast was sounding the alarm, revealing U.S. torture practices was a threat to the United States. And tonight, the fear that its release could threaten American lives. Some details never heard before, and many fearing tonight that revealing them will lead to violence. So telling the world about violence the United States committed could lead to violence. They were clear it was certain people in particular who were going to overreact. The Muslim world has erupted many times before when the U.S. and the West have been accused of religious and cultural slights. It's hard to imagine a reporter thinking brutal torture methods and threatening to sexually abuse a prisoner's mother are cultural slights. ABC was back at it the very next night, just in case anyone had missed their alarmist take the first time around. The only difference, the second report included a response from Dick Cheney. Indeed, it was common for U.S. media to get reaction to the Senate torture report from people who helped manage the torture program themselves. It was almost as if the TV networks had an equal time for torturers rule. NBC Nightly News gave its viewers a good look at what the Senate had found, but then they aired a long interview with former CIA Director Michael Hayden. He's a person who's singled out in particular in the Senate investigation for being especially misleading in his defenses of the CIA's practices. His deceptions have never seemed to harm his popularity with elite media, though. Hayden gave a pre-buttal of sorts to CBS Face the Nation on December 7th. CBS Evening News covered the Senate report, too, of course, but they paired their report with a segment focusing on the CIA's response and an interview with Michael Morell, the agency's former deputy director who now works for CBS. Now, some interviews with former government officials can be more contentious than others. CNN host Jake Tapper's questioning of Michael Hayden was one notable example. But it is bizarre to air softball interviews with people who have a well-documented history of deceiving the public. And finally, there continue to be serious questions surrounding a Rolling Stone investigation into sexual assaults on college campuses, and one particular case at the University of Virginia. Rolling Stone is stepping away from the flawed report, leaving many concerned that the larger issue of campus rape and rape culture is getting not just obscured, but undermined. A chance to disparage a feminist cause is an unfortunate draw for corporate media's attention. ABC's This Week was one outlet that was weighing in, bringing Rich Lowry of the right-wing National Review to offer a lesson in media accountability. Well, when something is so explosive, you have to be certain it's right. And Rolling Stone didn't do basic fact-checking here. I believe because they had an agenda to portray UVA as this bastion of white male privilege where basically rapists rule the social life, and the damage will never be undone. Fact-checking is important, and bad journalism does damage. There's no arguing with that. But it's a bit much coming from someone like Lowry, who, among other things, was one of the loudest advocates for the Iraq War, based on the supposed links between Saddam Hussein and al-Qaeda. As he put it on CBS, there is a connection between Iraq and al-Qaeda. There is no division in the U.S. government about this anymore. Everyone agrees there's 10 years' worth of contacts between Iraq and al-Qaeda. That claim was false, of course, and people knew it was false at the time. One wonders if Lowry thinks about the resulting damage that can't be undone. But why would he? Unlike Rolling Stone, Lowry faced no particular harm to his pundit career for being so careless with the facts. You might even call that a privilege. I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for tuning in to FAIR TV.